Welcome or welcome back to my channel, guys. It is your friendly neighborhood IT girl, Sierra, here with another TED Talk on all things techie tech tech related. So today's episode, guys, this is what you wanted. You asked for it. You voted for this one. This is the first episode of our video series, Student Success Guide, featuring <gasps> resumes. Um, and I do want to point out, though, we are obviously going to still talk about certifications and different things like that. This is just something that I wanted to do for you guys because some of you have asked about this sort of thing. So without further ado, like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> and let's continue. Okay, so resumes are extremely important. Obviously, we all know this. And today I'm going to talk about the one resume to rule them all. The one resume that is going to get you all the interviews. It's going to make sure to put your foot in that door. You are going to be able to hopefully land a job. There are a lot of other things that go into getting a job though, so don't rely solely on the resume. But hopefully it'll help you with that first step into getting the career, the lifestyle, the all the things that you want. So let's first talk about the different types of resumes. And there are two different types of resumes that you can have. You can have a resume that's good for automated systems and you can have a resume that's good for referenced jobs. So like somebody said she'd be great for this job and I know this person and they were like, you know, send them your resume. That's kind of what I mean by a reference job. Like you you knew somebody and they hooked you up with someone else. So you're just sending them your resume. We're going to start with automated system resumes. And if you don't know what that is, basically many, many companies at this point in time don't rely on actual HR people reading singular resumes as they come through. You know, like you, you see a job posting, you send in your resume via the, the little form that they have you fill out or occasionally maybe there might be an email address. But I think that's extremely rare these days, but maybe, maybe that's there. Um, but typically speaking, you send it through a form sort of thing and it'll go through an automated system. As soon as you send it through that form, it gets put through some sort of automated system where it looks for certain types of things and then it either says you're qualified or you're not qualified for this job. So this first set of resumes, we're going to focus on being qualified for the job, having it pass these automated systems. Because if you don't get past the automated system, you're like immediately out. Like you didn't even get a chance to do anything. Um, so that's where we're going to start. Now I am going to show you my actual resume and I am obviously going to remove a lot of personal information from it. I'm also going to um, redact the experience section because that is my personal experience. So I am going to tell you kind of, you know, a template for that, but just know that certain things will be removed from the resume just because it is my own personal stuff and you would replace it with your own personal stuff. So there you go. It might have blank spaces. I might put some warm ipsum in there. I'm not sure, but you'll be able to see it here on the screen as we talk about it. So the first thing that you'll notice from this resume is that it's kind of boring. <laughs> when I first learned about resumes, my immediate thought, because I had actually spent money on like Etsy um, formatted resumes and I, cause I wanted it to look good and I wanted it to be pretty and you know, I wanted it to be unique. <laughs> you have a resume? Yes, I do. Um... Uh... Pretty. It's pink. Oh, and it's scented. I think it gives it a little something extra, don't you think? But again, trying to get through automated systems, the formatting of these sort of resumes can potentially um, make it get caught up in the system. So even if you have a lot of things that should like probably pass through that automated system, the formatting of it will confuse the system and it'll make it to where it just doesn't understand. So your best bet is to have kind of a more basic formatted resume. This resume in particular was formatted through pages, just a template in pages. Windows, uh, a word has templates as well, or should I say Office 360 has templates in the word section. Most word processors have templates that you can use for resumes and things like that, cover letters, uh, reference things. So just know whatever word processor you use should have some sort of basic resume template. You can also just find them online by Googling free resume templates if you, you know, don't have a word processor. All right, so the major thing that you're going to see here is at the very, very top. This is obviously what's going to start your resume. You want to have your name um, and your contact information towards the top because this is going to be the, the place where people look to get how to contact you. You know, you want to have that front and center. You don't want to have them searching for how to, you know, reach you if you've got like a really, really small footnote sort of um, sort of contact or thing on the bottom. It's like, who's going to see that? You know, you have to make sure you have about really when people are looking at resumes, 
I would say you have about five seconds to to get their attention and to grab them in. You know, they say when you walk into a store, people have like 10 seconds to greet you and that's the amount of time that people are like, if you don't greet them, they're gonna leave your store. So in a resume format, think of it like that. Like you're trying to bring these people into your business and your business is you getting a job. So you want to highlight how to get that job. Make sure your name is kind of big. Make sure that your contact information is very visible. Use a font style that, or a, a typeface that is very legible. You wanna make sure it's easy to read. So that would be there at the top. Going down to the next level, your overview section. Some people leave out the overview. I think that it's very important to have the overview and I will tell you exactly why. Basically, you have only so many places where you can put keywords for things. So to get through these automated systems, again, they look for certain keywords. If you are trying to do UX, UI design, they want to see that somewhere in your resume. And if you don't have any experience with UX, UI design, where are you going to put that? I mean, you can put it in like a skills section or something, but you kind of want to make it to where people get more of an overview of you as a person in, you know, only so many words. So I highly recommend an overview section where you kind of just put a couple of keywords and what your skills are as well in there. Just so in case, think of it as like tags for YouTube. So you're in YouTube, you have a title, but you also put different tags in there also, you know? So like your overview area is to describe yourself, but give you an extra opportunity to put those specific phrases that the automated system might be looking for in a more coherent fashion. So explain yourself. I, like I said, I highly recommend doing something where you talk about your skill sets, you talk about um, what your experience is as a brief, you know, maybe like one sentence for your skill set, one sentence for your, your experience, you know, one sentence for what you've been doing in the past couple of years, like if you went to school or you got some sort of certifications or something. Um, and then what, like what your major thing is, like what is it that you want to pursue? Not necessarily to say you're you're in pursuit of this, like say, you know, I want to be like a CEO of a company in five years or something like that. Not like that sort of a thing, but say, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to growing as a communicator in a project manager role or something along those lines so that people understand like, hey, you may not have a lot of experience or something or you your experience may not align with what you're trying to do, but this this is where you're going and these are the skills that you have and this is how everything, you know, culminates to make you a great fit for this job. So that's what should be in your overview section. Now, following that section, this can be kind of tailored to your personal preference, depending on where you're at in your career, your educational career, your, you know, what, your life in general. Um, and you can either have your education first, your skills first, or your uh, experience first. So whichever one you think is stronger, I would put at the top. Again, because you only have so much time before people stop reading your stuff. <laughs> so I personally put my education first because that is what was the best for me because at the time I didn't have any sort of experience in tech. So I put my education first and you can mix and match these. Like if you've got a, a BS or a BA, uh, or I should say just a bachelor's if you've got a bachelor's and a master's or like, you know, a PhD or something You can go from top down or you know bottom up depending on what the job is and depending on the skill set that you're trying to um, Promote so I I personally did uh, BS to MS, but You know, it's your own personal preference which you would like to do so immediately after that I followed mine with certifications because I thought a degree is pretty important like people would probably think oh she you know sat around and like learned about this thing for such amount of time so that's kind of like cool so I put the degree first obviously with the education um, because for me that I thought was weightier and then I put the certifications underneath that and then here you want to list all the certifications you have just by name you don't have to put uh, the, t the date you got them or anything like that that's kind of overkill if they really want to see it, they can ask you for that certification or you can have it also listed on your LinkedIn and put a link to it so that people can click on it and I'll have all that information there. All right, next level down from that, we have our skills section and here's where you really get to shine. You really wanna talk about number one things that you know about though, like things that you know about currently because most times, especially for tech, you're gonna get tested on it. Like, like interview processes uh, include testing 99.9% .9 of the time. So whatever you have in there, like say you put that you know Python or um, and 
they're like, but you said you knew Python, so we're gonna send you a hacker rank test. And I mean, granted, in hacker rank, you get to choose which language you want to use. But it's like, if you're saying that you know some sort of some sort of programming language, you better know it because you're gonna be tested on it. Um, they, you know, different frameworks also in there. Like whatever you're putting in there, just make sure that you still kind of know. If you if you put, I don't know. Uh, cobalt <laughs> like if you put some random thing in there and uh you know apply for a job that happens to run on that that language then it they'll be like but you i saw it <laughs> I, I saw it in there um and you'll be like what sorry <laughs> so just make sure that you're being relatively truthful you put it in there a lot of the times when you apply for these job listings they will say a lot of things and uh I think it's been common to have people tell you to tailor your resume for that specific job, you know, whatever. That does not mean lie. That does not mean go put the thing that they say that they work with or need into your resume just so you can seem like a better candidate. It just means be be truthful about the the core of what it is that you need to know for the job. So say the job works in like java or something do you have to know java it's super helpful <laughs> like you should because that's what they work with it'd be great if you knew it but at the same time if you know any other object um oriented programming language then the the skill set is still you know the similar to transfer so it's like as long as you have the basic thing you're fine you don't have to change your resume you don't have to change your self to get this one particular job just know that if you have a skill set that is very similar go ahead and leave your resume alone and just apply for the job now i also think that it's good to be fairly fairly in depth on this one because again you have automated systems and they're just running it through them so you want to have as many keywords as possible again you've got your uh, overview section where you put some keywords in there this is your second chance to get other keywords in there so don't necessarily put the same keywords. Like I said, if you said that you were good at UX, UI, you don't have to put it again. You can just, if you don't have a lot of stuff on there, you feel free to like fill it out a little bit. But if you have a lot of other skills that you want to highlight as well, feel free to put it in the skills section so that you have a better chance of passing that automated system when it's looking for specific keywords and phrases. Now, additionally, a common practice for beginners is to also link your projects in your resume. And you can put just a plain link to your projects if you want to, if you have, and I mean, this isn't going to be a portfolio. Well, we'll do a separate video on like portfolio stuff, but if you haven't put your portfolio together in such a way where it's easily like navigable, I don't know if navigable is a word, navigated, if it's easily navigated by someone who's looking at it, I wouldn't put just a singular link for your projects. I would pick maybe like three, three of your best projects, two or three, you know, make it easier on yourself if you don't feel like going through three of them, just pick two. Um, and then we want to say what language it's in, kind of a, a basic overview of what the project is and why you chose that project maybe even, if you've got, if you've got space, add why you chose that project because a lot of recruiters, a lot of hiring managers, once your, once your resume gets past that first step, they wanna see stuff that you've done. And a lot of people will have a GitHub listed or something like that, which is, you know, which is fine if that's the only thing that you've got. But again, typically they're, they may or may not want to actually grow through it because most times GitHub just, you know, goes to a GitHub, which is, is like, just a bunch of code and people don't really know what that code is supposed to do. They don't, you know, understand why you chose that. So if you can add a little bit of information to help them understand what is going on in your GitHub, that'll be super helpful. And in our resumes, we do that by just adding a little section to say an overview of what the project is. Again, just list the language so that they understand what language is and you know what it consists of. Um, and then maybe even in the overview, like a little section of why you chose it because not only do people want to know what this project is and you know like how it works and stuff but a lot of times i i've listened to so many different hiring managers say that like why did you do this <laughs> so they want to know a little bit more about you as a person for those specific ones who do because a lot of them like i said they're on a time crunch they don't take the extra step to look at things but for the ones that are very curious and who you know really do want to get to know you as a person and that's why they will bring you in um they want to see why you did this project you know did it 
what motivated you to complete it did you have some sort of personal connection to it and once you explain that it'll give them a personal connection to you and so like i said maybe don't go too in depth in this little section because we want to keep our resume pretty short you know if your resume is over two pages that's too long um but you want to just give maybe like a sentence or two of why you chose that project all right, so now we are almost done with our lovely resume to rule them and we have two sections left which is our experience and our interests so we want to do an experience section because <laughs> they always want to know what your experience is you know it's just part of a resume so you want to put in your experience whatever that may be again the whole point is if you don't have any experience in the tech industry to cover that in the areas that we had previously your overview section your skills section uh, your projects all those different things there if you if you already have experience you don't really need to put projects unless you're trying to you know kind of wow people with um, how your skill level has increased over the years or something like that but if you've already got experience and you've worked on a bunch of stuff obviously you don't have to put a project section you can just skip to the experience section uh, but now uh, focusing back on the experience section solely okay so here at the top what we want to do is you want to tell what your what your actual role at the job was put the company name put your actual role maybe put the date span. You don't have to give exact dates. I know sometimes in forms they ask for exact dates, which you may or may not have right off the top of your head. Like I know sometimes I don't remember the exact dates that I worked at a job and I just kind of guess around what they are. It's not the biggest deal if you don't know the exact date. So I just put years, but you can put whatever you want. I recommend years though, because again, it makes it easier to just glance at. So you wanna have a company, your role, or title and then the year after that you want to go ahead and tell what you would like the overview of your job what were you specifically responsible for don't tell them what you like contributed to because um, nobody really cares <laughs> they want to know what you did were you innovative were you somebody who helped the company grow like what kind of assets do you bring to the new job this is your time to shine be as you know selfish as like have a huge hubris and say all the things that you think you did for that company after you say that in the section right below it this is where we like to quantify those those actions that you say that you performed and you want to use terms like increase like say i increased the sales uh, the quarterly sales by 10%. You you know, if you don't have a percentage, that's totally fine. But just say you increased some, something by something or you um, enhanced something by something. Maybe you, um, let's see, what else do I have? Elevated, you know, those sorts of words. You want to quantify what you did in that overview of your job section, at, like right before it Give some sort of metrics so that people can see what you attribute um, or what you contribute more so what you contribute to a company people want people of value and they want people of value at a discount <laughs> so later maybe we'll talk about negotiation but in general they just want to know that you're gonna make them some money somehow how you gonna do it I don't know write it in this section but they want to know that you are somebody who looks like they can bring something to this team and depending on how long your resume is at this point I would suggest probably it like I don't depends on what it, I don't know whatever your actual experience is it's going to vary wildly so anywhere from I'd say one to four jobs you can have in there just it could be the full page for your second page it could be just a section of your second page again it's whatever your experience is just like I said try and keep the whole resume to two pages so again front and back if you had to print it out somewhere and give it to somebody it's not a bunch of pages then the last section on this resume is your interest section and we put this here basically because once you get past that automated system you don't really have the opportunity to give a second resume you know a resume that's more friendly i call it um more like a real person so in the interest section you want to include a couple things that you like to do and maybe something that you're learning because again in tech we like to learn and we always want to be open-minded and constantly learning things so you want to put stuff that you know maybe you you started doing during the pandemic maybe you started it last week you know just or maybe if you've leveled up in something that's even better like say i don't know say you play D, &D or something like that and you leveled up to level 
487 it's like that's that's intense so maybe put that in there because maybe somebody else really likes D&D &D and you guys can talk about that as well and it shows that you're not only interested but you are committed <laughs> so like whatever it is put it in there it's because it's a talking point it shows that you like to learn and to grow and again it's just cool to kind of see what people are into so interest section interest section um, is, is very, very useful. Okay, so that is it for our automated systems resumes. Again, I, I hope you guys have, can check those out and you know, it helps you out a little bit like that. We're gonna move into our referral type resumes. And luckily with this one, you do have a little more leeway. Now that is because typically speaking, if somebody gets a referral for a hiring manager or for somebody who is a team lead for some sort of company, Whenever they see resumes, they very much look the same. Again, to pass these automated systems, resumes have to be super freaking basic and they're not that interesting to look at. So when a human actually has to look at it, it might put them to sleep. And I've heard, I've heard other hiring managers say that they have seen, you know, like 15 resumes back to back to back and they all look exactly identical. And it makes them sad because it's so boring. It makes their job so boring. So know your audience. Like I said, know if it's going through an automated system, know if it's going to a real person. A real person, I do recommend, you know, you could get like an Etsy resume with a cool format and whatever, because it shows your uniqueness. Um, also, you do want to make it legible though, so be cognizant of what the layout looks like and if it's a little too crunched up together, if things are a little too big and, you know, whatever. Well, use your judgment if you go ahead and get an Etsy formatted resume. But you do want to make it different. So like I said before, you could use a pages template or, you know, a word processing template to just get through those automated systems. This one, you want to be a little bit more creative. Maybe you want to um, move your you know, you're heading around a little bit. Maybe you want to just put some cute, put some wording in there that's a little less basic, like I said, in the overview section of the, the automated systems one. But you want to be more personable in one that you're sending in to an actual human, just because no one else is going to be. So you want to make yourself look unique. And to do that, that's going to happen through your wording. And in your wording, you want to, again, if you're doing an overview section, be clear in what it is that you can provide, you know, so you're, I've got so many years of experience in this, and I'm moving into this role and blah, blah, blah. But you can say it in a funny way. Like if you're kind of funny, you can be kind of funny in it because a human will get that. A computer won't get that. If you want to, you know, be um, a little just more artsy about it, you can be a little bit more artsy. Put more, you know, uh, flourishy kind of words in there so that it seems more like poetry when they read it or something. Like if, if that's your thing, then you can put it in there. I don't highly recommend that because I don't think a lot of people in tech may respond to that well but i'm just saying like whatever your thing is you can make that more of a you thing um in this overview section because people want to see individuality when they're reading a resume but they want all the information that they need to have as well so take that template that first template that we have this one here and then just make it a little bit more your own and um again i'll just show like a prototype of what i've come up with here for a referral resume but that speaking, you're going to want to include the same things again. You like you're going to want to include the skills. You're going to want to include your education, your certifications, um, projects. Again, especially if you have projects and you have no prior experience, you want to do that for this section. Um, and then the interest section again, because they want to know you as a person. So that's pretty much it for resumes. I hope that helps you guys and cleared up a couple of things. I have a couple more of these videos to do where we just talk about different you know, like I said, different things that may be of interest for people in school, like scholarships, how to get them, where to find them, um, free things, just all sorts of different stuff. But again, not stopping to talk, like we're going to keep talking about certs. Don't worry about it. And if you like any of those things or any of the things to come, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.